This is Megatron, and you're listening to the Beast Unleashed podcast. <laughs> oh, yes. Listening to all things Transformers and the Beast Unleashed uh, crossover. I'm your host Steve Megatron Phillips, and joining me as always is DFD and Mike. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well. Yes, and we have a uh, very, very awesome privilege coming up this evening. Um, this actually will not air until next week. We are recording this Friday, December fourth. It won't air until um, Friday. December, uh, Friday, December eleventh. Is that right? Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. Because the twelfth is the Saturday. That's the that's the holiday show record for Tunecast. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, we have huge news, and we've kept this a secret from everybody because it just it's just off the scale. Uh, yes. I, th- I think this is the part where we need to get our geekiness out now, so we don't geek out on the next part that we have to record. Um, the Beast Unleashed podcast, as most everyone has already heard episode zero, because episode zero will be out for this, uh, before this will, but, um, Steve and I and Michael Wilson will be doing a Beast, uh, Beast Wars, Beast Machines review podcast, much in the vein of TFG1, but a little bit better, because we've all grown in the past year and a half of podcasting, and we actually know what the hell we're doing to some degree, um, (laughs) so, yeah. I wanted to do something really special for Steve's birthday. Steve's birthday was six months ago, unfortunately. Uh, And now is the only time I was able to finally get something out of uh, what I was looking for. I wanted to get an interview with David Kay. Everybody knows David Kay is Beast Wars, Beast Machines, Megatron. He also played Megatron in the Unicron trilogy. And he plays Optimus Prime in Transformers Animated along with Grimlock and Lugnut. Um, so yeah, happy belated birthday, buddy. (laughs) Thank you. Yes, it took, uh, six months, a lot of, uh, unanswered emails and phone calls, and just one night I just happened to be on Facebook, I just happened to look in the chat window, and lo and behold, uh, I I have have friended David K on, on Facebook, and he was in the chat, and I just said, you know, hey, how you, this is like right before Thanksgiving this year, said, hey, how you doing, are you ready for the Thanksgiving holiday? Um, you know, I, I, you know, wasn't really sure what else to say to the guy, honestly, because, holy crap, it's David Kay, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Um, so I was like, you know, my friend and I, you know, are really big Beast Wars fans, we're actually going to be starting up a Beast Wars Beast Machines review podcast next year. And he said, oh, well, let me know if you need any sound bites. And I just, I said, it's it's funny that you bring that up, because we were actually wanting to interview you. I had contacted your, your assistant and and said that we could work something out, but never heard anything back from him. He said, oh, okay, well, just, you know, send me a a, a message, and, or, send, you know, send me, you know, stuff with the info and whatever else. I said, all right. I said, I'll send you a message on Facebook. So a few Facebook messages later, here we are, you know, um, less than eight minutes until we have to actually contact Mr. K. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, this is hopefully going to be, hopefully we can get more, uh, Beast Wars, Beast Machines actors, uh, for, for voice actors for interviews. As well as the writers. Yeah, yeah, as well as the writers, um. Uh, you know, so you know, this is a. I think this is going to be a great treat for the all things Transformers uh, subscribers, and of course the uh, soon to be Beast Unleashed uh, subscribers. We are actually starting the show in January. Uh, that will be when Episode One will be. Episode Zero, as I said, will be up um, next week. Next Friday. Basically, Episode Zero and this are going up next Friday. Um, I think I might make the listeners suffer like an extra day. <laughs> First, they won't know that until they listen to this. Yes, exactly. Um, 
so yeah, we're you know we're just trying to contain our contain our excitement because yeah we want to be professional when we talk to Mr. K. Um, we've got a bunch of great questions for him, um, and hopefully he can give us some promos in his various voices. Um, so we'll see where that goes from there. Do you have any other final thoughts before we continue? Yes. Yes. We'll no, not really. I was just. We'll I felt like doing it. Yes, we'll see. Um, we'll see how the War of the Megatrons goes. I'm not sure how that's worked just yet. Uh, I may say. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So up next is the interview with David K. Podcast good. Hello, everyone. This is Michael Blanchard, and I am joined by my friend and podcasting partner Stephen C. Phillips. Today we have a super awesome privilege to interview David K. Yes, that's right. Megatron from Beast Wars and Beast Machines is on the line with us. Hello, David. How are you, man? Doing pretty good. How are you? Good. Yes. Um, just to um get things going here where um for most people that may not you know know about you online or know where where to look for information from you or whatever where did you grow up i actually grew up uh, back in canada i grew up in a place a little little place called peterborough um it was it's um hockey town central uh, up there and if, if you didn't if you didn't you know own hockey equipment there was something wrong with you <laughs> so, and it was a donut shop on, on a big corner I, i'd actually believe there still is and um, yeah, that's where I that's where I grew up. But uh, spent a lot of time in Vancouver, and then uh, I was commuting to Los Angeles for for about ten years until we finally moved uh, two years ago. Too many airplanes. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm based in Burbank, California. Oh, cool. Um, what got your voice acting career started? Uh, a lie. <laughs> what was it? Sid? Um, well, not really. It was kind of a white lie, I guess. Um, I, in Vancouver, I was I met an agent uh, there who was teaching a commercial modeling class. The modeling part was goofy. Um, I think at, at that school, if you had one eye, you were you know they thought, oh, you you, you could you know you could work in this business, uh, but it was you know a bunch of crap. Uh, but the acting side of it, there was a commercial thing. You get to learn lines, and and and, and it was my first. Uh, uh, four into that business, and uh, the guy who was teaching it became my my very first agent, a very close friend. And then he asked me if I wanted an agent. I said, Yeah, sure. He said, Can you do voices? And I said, yeah, okay. You know, sure. I lied. And this is an audition for GI Joe coming up, and uh, I auditioned for General Hawk, and, and I ended up getting the part. And I had no idea what I was doing. And it was uh, it was the coolest thing ever. So that, from that moment on, that's what I wanted to do. Cool. Very cool. Um, Steve, you've got a couple of questions for Mr. K there. I'm not saying I'm not saying to lie. Oh no, no, no we know. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, we we completely understand that. <laughs> it, it was convenient at the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, did getting started in radio help you transition into voice acting? Um, not really. That was a really t- it was a really tough transition from radio because, um, for example. Y- if you're given a, something to read in, in radio or, or to talk over the intro of a song, when I, you know, back in high school, I had a part-time job at it. Um, it was, you know, it has its own style and its own thing. And when you get into voiceover, everything is slowed way down. And if you, if you send anything like you're talking on the radio, there's no way you're going to get hired for any, you know, um, any of the big gigs. It's just that's the way. It's the way it was. It's the way I was told by a lot of production houses. So I had to really work at it, even as, you know, so many years being in the business in Vancouver when I first started doing stuff. I had to really work at losing a, a sort of a radio sound. And, and there is, I think we all know what that sort of is. Mm-hmm. Um, you're hearing a lot more people on the air these days who are very natural sounding, and, and, and that's, you know, the way it should be. But back, you know, back then it was sort of a heightened sort of, hey, how are you? You know, 75 degrees downtown, and people didn't really talk like that. And so, when you when you're when you're taught to do that, and you spend your all your waking hours doing that to, to get rid of that is really tough. So it's actually better coming at it from a non-radio broad, uh, background. If you know, if you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you've done many other acting roles outside of Transformers. Uh, which do you prefer, voice acting on, or do you prefer voice acting or on camera work? I, I prefer voice acting. Uh, it's just uh, I, I know I know what to do technically in here. I know 
what I'm capable of, and I know it's just for me. It's play. Um, I, I do when I'm on set. When I have done stuff on set, and I, you know, I've been in, in the films and television shows. It is fun. It's it's a it, it is a, a good time. There's a lot of waiting around. Um, but just to prefer for me, I prefer the, the voice side of things, and I just I just love it every day. Okay, and. Can you reveal any behind-the-scenes moments during uh, Beast Wars and Beast Machines recordings? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, sure. I mean, there was, <laughs> there was a lot of dirty jokes and horsing around, and uh, and uh, you know, God bless Sue Blue, she is able to wrangle us, or, uh, you know, rein us in. Yeah. Um, but it was. Uh, <laughs> it was a, a really, a really fun cast, and it was—I I don't know—it was the most fun I've ever had on a show. I think what approached the, the most fun I've had on a show is working on the, the new Transformers. Uh, it's currently uh, out, just the, because you're working with people like you know, Tom Kenny and who's SpongeBob and Bill Fegerbacki, who was you know Patrick. Working with the cast that makes it fun. Right. And it's like it, it literally, literally in the room. It's like a bunch of kids playing around and throwing things at each other. And it's up to the director basically to rein us all in and settle us down. Otherwise, we get carried away. And there's a lot of snickering and laughing and joking. But somehow we get a show done out, a show done out of it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> feel like you are typecast as Megatron. Do I feel like I yes. am? Yes. Oh, I love it. That's fine. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, that's great. Bring it on. Um, and it's funny. Um, I when I first uh, met my friend Steve here, um, didn't actually know he imitated voices. And uh, in my mind, it's almost like um, it's almost like hearing the real Megatron, which you are, um, Steve. If you want to show off your your skills there to Mr. K, why don't you say something in Megatron's voice? Excellent. Yes. What do you think? Not bad. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <laughs> um, go ahead, Steve, with the next. Um, what is your favorite memory from Beast Wars and Beast Machines, and what do you miss most? Pulling Gary's finger. <laughs> um, I, I guess... Uh, I, I miss from the, I mean I miss the, really you miss the cast like I mentioned before it's 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 tons of fun um, the joking around and going in for uh, four hours and, and knowing that uh, you're gonna have four hours of fun and, and you know read some well written scripts um, some of my favorite stuff was from Larry and and, and Bob Larry Dottillo and Bob Forward uh, yeah just the camaraderie just you know. Uh, working with your buds that's what I miss I miss the most on, ev on every show I do I never want to leave you know I never want the show to be over <laughs> was there anything that you did not like or was hard for you in uh, both the Beast series uh no 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 the only thing that was hard is when when I was cast as Optimus in, in, in TF Animated it was a hard transition for a few episodes to find out who really kind of find the voice and find it, you know, where I wasn't kind of struggling, because uh, after so many years of playing the bad guy, you're now the good guy, and that was a little bit of a, a tough transition, but uh, other than that, no, not at all. Um, at the time Beast Wars and Beast Machines were on air, which voice actors in the industry did you admire most? Well, the people that I'm working with uh, in C, uh, down here in L.A. Uh, on a daily basis, you know, I run into uh, to Peter Cullen uh, a lot, and... Um, I don't know if he knows who I am or anything, because I've seen, I've seen, I've met him about like a half a dozen times, and I just kind of get the feeling that he doesn't really know who I am. Uh, yeah, I think he does, but I don't, who knows? Uh, but he's always been a hero. Frank Welker has been a uh, major, uh, major hero of mine. Um, and uh, there's many, there's many people. I mean, you know, modern stuff. Tom Kenny and the, uh, um, the folks that do Chowder, I think they're all brilliant. Uh, Flapjack, I did an episode of Flapjack recently, and that was just a, that was a total riot. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, in, in, who really got me in, in, into the industry? So a lot, I do a lot of promo network tra trailer and promo and stuff like that. And in, in the trailer business, was Don LaFontaine. He, he died last year, and he's one of my main mentors. And it was a sad day when he left because he's a lot of people's hero. And so, uh, yeah, you know, and the cool thing is uh, a lot of these guys, uh, 
you, you see you see on on the, doing the rounds down here. So it's kind of fun. Yeah. Was there any voice actors in the industry that you just didn't get along with for one reason or another? Uh, very, very, very rarely, very few. Um, there, there are one couple now and again. You meet some folks, uh, and just as you, you know, in everyday life, they're a little kind of quirky and different, and they don't fit the mold. Um, it's like um, it's kind of like. Uh, you know, it's all it's, it's like a, a hundred, a hundred people, uh, and and there's kind of like two that kind of kind of stick out. Where everyone kind of goes, yeah, what's the deal with them? And it, it, but otherwise, no, it's very very rare in this business. Mm-hmm. How are you informed that the show that Beast Wars and Beast Machines were coming to an end? And did you think the show had done everything it could, or did you wish it would have gone on longer? Oh, because we all wish it would go on longer, but nothing lasts, you know, lasts forever. Um, it, it, it's it's uh, you know the show sells toys and and, and Hasbro has their own uh, agenda and has their own thing and it's uh, that's what it does it's it's a vehicle for selling uh, for selling toys and if they don't think it's working or you know they want to change it up and uh, you know they will I mean we're lucky we got uh, you're lucky you get a season out of, out of a cartoon so when it went I think it went like yeah four, four, five four, actually yeah. yeah. I total. I mean, that's uh, after the first season. Now, now it's like bonus time. Yeah, right? really. So, yeah. Over the course of the show, did you ever watch the cartoon back to hear what you sounded like? Basically, did you ever watch the show back in the '90s while you were working on it? Yeah, I did. Um, but truthfully, it was to see the animation and how it, it was progressing. I, I'm very finicky about what I do, and I, I've never totally. Uh, happy with it, which is fine. You know, I always striving, but there's also uh, sometimes it's hard to actually in- enjoy it because you're listening with a critical ear, and, and it's uh, it, it's hard to do. The certain things, the speeches I, that I did, ah, it turned out pretty good. Other things I hear and I go, ah, oh, that was what did they use that for, or why did I do that? You know, so it's uh, just uh, me being self-critical a lot of the time. Yeah. But I did watch. Uh, I watched a fair number of them, and I'll, I'll dig them out again and watch them uh, quite often. Yeah, I do that quite often as well. Yeah. How easy or hard was it for you to keep track of which voice went with what character? Uh... Sometimes it was. It depended. Uh, some, certain characters just came naturally. Uh, other ones, uh, they would they would show up uh, at a different. Uh, and a different episode, and they'd have to play you uh, what you did before. Although, you know, Megatron was always, um, uh, would get you into the voice, would be the laugh, or the yes, excellent, yes, Commander Rattrap. And as soon as I said that, I was back in the character. Um, and then, you know, for the for the current one that's on television, it's, it's Optimus, uh, you know, transform and roll out. Once they get that out, then I can I can find my, where I'm supposed to be. Um the episode of Flapjack I just did, it was sort of a, they wanted a Mexican accent, but they didn't want it too, too strong. They wanted, didn't want it to sound Spanish. So that took a bit of sort of working around. And finally, when you, when you land into it, there's a certain phrase or certain thing you say that can get you back into character. Yeah. Uh, so I, I've never had too much trouble, but there's times when I've forgotten what the heck I did. So yeah, <laughs> That's why we ask the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite part or memory about doing each of the Transformer cartoons? Uh, let me see. Uh, I remember the, the first time we saw the rendered animation of the, of the of the Beast Wars stuff. When we first saw what they were doing at that time, um, you look at it now and go, "Oh man, that's lame," because <laughs> it's come so far. But the first time we saw it, it was, "Whoa, this is different." Yeah. That's quite exciting. Um, and then uh, I like some of the speeches. Um, the, the, the uh, what was the one that was that kind of darker um, beast machine? Yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of liked the noble stuff. Uh, people kind of thought it was so dark, but I kind of liked it. I liked that. I have a side <laughs> question actually about about the noble character. Was that more closely to your own voice than the Megatron voice? They wanted me to pull back. They wanted they wanted the direction from Sue Blue at the time was okay. So like you know he, uh, it's it's Megatron, but we don't want people to you know to hear this Megatron. We want them to kind of hear a little bit of it, but you know. So I had to kind of find a, 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 a an in between type of voice to, to make people you know realize oh it's probably him or oh is it him or 
that was sort of the direction given at the time. Yes. Uh, and the other, yeah, with the, I guess the, uh, the CF animated uh, was uh, standing beside Tom Kenny, uh, SpongeBob, uh, working every episode. That was fun. <laughs> uh, I have a question closer to the end about about uh, about a couple of the animated stuff. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Um, which voice actors that you have worked with uh, do you still keep in contact with? A lot, pretty much all of them. Really? Uh, like Tara Strong is a good friend. Uh, I see Tom all the time, and uh, it's Bill. Yeah, we always see Corey, uh, Corey Burton. Um, I mean, yeah, we always sometimes we don't see them a lot, uh, but it's like old home week when we see them to get together. Uh, I see Greg Berger a lot. Uh, he wasn't in the show, but I see him out uh, doing the rounds. And he's a really, he's a great guy. So yeah, we all we all maintain friendships. Uh, I used to hang out in. Uh, Bumper Robinson and I, who played uh, uh, Bumblebee, uh, we're Lakers fanatics, and so we'll text each other during the game, and you know, either we'll be mad or we'll be happy or uh, <laughs> miserable or whatever it is. Uh, so yeah, we're always. I can just see Bumblebee getting mad over a Lakers game. <laughs> oh, dude! You do that job? Oh, dude! You know, yeah. yeah. Um, now this goes back to you. You had mentioned Peter Cullen earlier. How was it meeting him at one of the? I know that you had met him at one of the bot cons. And can you tell us? Yeah, in, in Rhode Island. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell? For the, for the, go ahead. Sorry. So yeah, for the first time, it was Rhode Island. At the, at, I believe. Right. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your bot con experience and your thoughts on the whole like fan base for Transformers? Oh, uh, it's great. I mean, without it, you know, you, you, well as you know, as I know, that there wouldn't be any anything without the fans, and they're the one that buy the toys and watch the show and and go to the cons. It's a, it's it's huge huge business. Um, I, I I always hope people get their money's worth when they go because yeah. uh, you know, it's an expensive weekend. No. Um, it can be expensive. Very much so. Yes. Um, so I worry about that that aspect of it because. You know, you want to try and get as many people there as possible. Right. I, lo- I love the kids and they're coming up and, and just you know, it's it's it still uh, blows me away mm-hmm. that uh, when you, when you do a convention and, and fans are all there and you know to see the work you've done and sign autographs is still strange for me. Um, I mean, it's like me meeting Peter Cullen for the first time. It's like I was kind of shaky and kind of kind of like, uh, oh, you're that guy that you know, I was still like an idiot. Um, and yet we do the same thing. Yeah. So uh, I'm also also a fan too. Um, this next question has to do with a episode of Transformers Animated. Uh, it was close to the end of season three, where Optimus Prime had got his jetpack. I don't know if this is true or not, but did you bring a little bit of Beast Wars Megatron to Optimus Prime and Animated? Because there was you used two lines when you were flying through the air. You used the excellent and the yes. Uh, yes, that was that was. Uh, as, as close to the beginning of the show, um, the animators are all big fans of the, you know Beast Wars and stuff like that, and Derek Wyatt and Matt Youngberg and Marty Eisenberg. They're all trying to, you know, we go to lunch. We I still go to lunch with those guys, and we, we hang out and get new comics on new comic book day. Mm-hmm. And it was always a plan to somehow, you know, work it into the script, and so that's what they did. Very. You know, yeah, that, that's an homage to the. Uh, to the other series. Very cool. And the final question uh, before we uh, wrap this up is what, Steve? What was it like being the only voice actor in Transformers history to switch sides? <laughs> that was the strangest thing when I got that call. I thought for sure at the end of the time it was going to be, oh, they want you back as Megatron. <laughs> it was, oh, they want you back as Optimus. Who? <laughs> what do you mean? You mean Optimus? You mean the, the Optimus one? Yeah. And then my agent wasn't quite sure down here who I'd played. I said, she said, well, what, didn't you play him before? I said, no, I was, I was, you should have done I said, you sure they want, it's Optimus? There's no, said, no, that's what they, that's the suit, that's the suit just called. Like, oh. So that was, totally blew me away. <laughs> it was very surprising. <laughs> All right, so we would like to thank Mr. K for taking the time to chat with us in this special All Things Transformers and the Beast Unleashed podcast interview. Uh, We would like you to hold the line for a few minutes so we can possibly get some promos from you. Uh, Do you have it? Absolutely. Yes. I will hold the line. (laughs) Don't take too long. Do you have any? Might unleash all hell on you or something. (laughs) (laughs) 
Megatron ever cursed in the show. Wow, that's that's yeah, that's, yeah that's right. That's the curse right there. <laughs> um, do you have any final? Uh, j- just for like a closing, do you have any final words for the Transformers fans? Yes, um, there is uh, something new in the works. Um, I certainly can't guarantee that, that I'll be involved, <laughs> uh, but uh, there is um, there is stuff happening, um, and uh, so you, you you won't be without uh, you know without the next uh, next installment, but. Um, but yeah, with it, it remains to be seen that I will be involved or not. But otherwise, um, you know, if I'm not, uh, it's been well over 15 years in the franchise, and uh, I got no regrets, man. It's been it's been a blast. Yeah, I think you and Sue Blue are the two. I know Sue is the longest ever to be associated with it, but I and she still will. Yes. Be. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's a big hint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Maybe a good sign. Too. Yes. Yeah, but keep, keep that to yourself and all those people out um, there. You know this is going on air, right? Anyway, <laughs> thank you again, Mr. K. Um, again, welcome. please hang on, and we will um, be right back with the special uh, closing to this interview. This is Megatron, leader of the Predacons, and you're listening to the Beast Unleashed podcast. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Hello and welcome back to All Things Transformers Beast Unleashed Podcast Crossover. You've just heard the interview of David K. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yes, that was freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, wow. Uh, y- yeah, uh-huh. That, that was great. Yes, it was so nice of him to, you know, spend time with us on a oh, Friday yeah. evening and oh, yes. do this interview. Very much so. And we did get a few promos out of him, which will probably be uh, spritzed through this episode and through the other um, episodes of each show. Um, so, yeah, um, just, you know, I, I'm like, I don't know, for some odd reason, every time after I do an interview, I'm just like in so much shock, it's just like, I can't talk. <laughs> yes, I know how that goes. <laughs> Uh, he he uh he actually liked your uh your impression. Said it was the best, one of the best, probably if not one of the best, but the best one that he's heard. That's awesome. Yeah. So that means I've been practicing very well. Uh yeah yeah. Um, so coming up, um, let's see, I gotta pull up the schedule here. Um, coming up in uh January after um this airs, we're gonna take a, a Christmas break for the Beast Unleashed podcast side anyway. Uh, and coming up in late January, you will hear uh, episode one of the Beast Unleashed podcast uh, with myself, uh, Steve, of course, and Michael Wilson will be joining us, um, which people would have heard him in the episode zero, but he was unable to record with us this evening. Um, so, yes, uh, we will see you in January 2010.